everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Joanne. In this video, I want to do a quick overview, kind of first impressions that I usually do on the horse's new mini clementine bag in the color oat specifically. I've been seeing, of course, this brand all over social media as of late, um, including, of course, their uh, original clementine bag style, the bigger size to this one that I purchased. And really, to be honest, nothing really intrigued me except for the clementine. So when I heard and saw that they were going to release a mini size, I was really intrigued and really wanted to make the purchase. And so I did, I signed up for the notification uh, when they were gonna release it. And when they did, I went ahead and made the purchase. So if you're interested in learning my thoughts on this bag and kind of an, again, a general overview as well as like a what fits, please stay tuned. So like I mentioned, I did go ahead and purchase the mini Clementine in the color Oat. I was a little bit worried in terms of purchasing from a Australian website just because I've never done that, I believe. So I wasn't sure how that was gonna go in terms of like duties, taxes, shipping, all that kind of stuff, but it was super simplistic. Everything was displayed in Canadian dollars. And then when I went actually to make the purchase, it did charge my card in Canadian dollars. It didn't include any um, duties or taxes on checkout. Uh, so sure enough, when it was um, nearing the country, entering the borders, I did get a notification um, from the carrier for paying the duties and taxes. And that of course was via online and it was super simple and really easy to do. So overall a very seamless process and I was very happy with it. In terms of purchasing, I did purchase it on release, which was Monday, uh, October 21st, I believe. And it only arrived within a week. So I thought that was a very speedy process. Um, it was coming from Australia and really no complaints in regards to that. In terms of price, uh, so sure enough, I did get charged duties and taxes. Upon checkout, it came out to about $214 Canadian um, and it did qualify for free shipping. So I didn't need to pay anything on that end. It was my first purchase from the brand. So I did apply a 10% off discount and the duties and taxes did come out to about $23. So after everything was said and done and arrived at my doorstep, it cost me $238 Canadian. So in my opinion, just handling it, wearing it um, and experiencing it, I do think that is a really fair price for it. So in terms of packaging and how it came, um, there's lots of videos you can check out online for other people unboxing their bags. Um, one thing that I wasn't really expecting was that the actual shipping box was basically the size of the bag. So it was very small when it arrived and it kind of took me by surprise because I thought it would be a little bit bigger, but it was just basically the exact size of the bag. Um, and in some cases, I often do really appreciate presentation and packaging. I do love all those sorts of things, but I also do appreciate having a lack of packaging uh, because most of the time I do end up recycling it anyway. So in that case, I can find the wasteful aspect of it. And so it doesn't phase me Either way that they had really minimal packaging. So when I opened the box, it really, all I saw was the bag in its dust bag. Um, and it was kind of secured with a thin kind of cardboard that was wrapped around the base of the bag. And aside from that, um, the handles and other hardware and things like that were wrapped, uh, but no crazy amount of packaging like tissue paper or anything like that that I found in my box. It also of course came with this dust bag. So here it is, nothing to, be said about it, has some white string on the inside, so it is one of those kind of drawstring dust bags, but nothing too crazy on that front. Um, it is just a normal dust bag. Um, and then it also came for the actual tag. It looks like this. So on here, it kind of just says, this piece is designed to help carry and care for your most trusted items. Um, for its collections, the horse chooses high quality leathers that will acquire a distinct personal patina over time. Um, and for more information, it just kind of says, visit their website and something that I do like it does come with a little sample of the leather so if you ever want to test anything on the bag instead of going directly on the bag it's nice because you can kind of test it on this leather swatch um, so you can be sure that it's not going to damage the bag in any way. Aside from that it also had this little paper right here um, and it just shows uh, a little bag that shows I think the original Clementine bag uh, and on the back it just has a care guide on how to best care for your bag um, And I thought this was interesting. It just says uh, your order was packed with love by and it looks like it was packed by Gemma right there. So that was a kind of a nice touch um, something that uh, 
they include in there. So that's quite helpful in terms of making sure you know how to best preserve and take care of your bag. Now, in terms of the actual dimensions of the bag, I will leave dimensions on the screen for your reference. This is what it looks like. It does have a non-detachable short carry handle, and aside from that, kind of a stiffer base going around it. There's no feet, but it has kind of these extra leather tabs on the bottom. Um, and aside from that, it has kind of this design element here. And uh, it does have these hooks here on the edge to attach the strap. Over on the top, it has a magnetic closure and it has leather covered uh, magnets on either side. And inside is a matching colored, um, kind of like a, just like a cotton interior fabric. Um, and it has one open slip pocket here and that's about it. And then it also does have a patch on the back that says the horse as well. Um, it has just these little tabs here on the edges. And aside from that, in terms of branding, it just has the horse debossed up there on the front. So a very simplistic bag, basically exactly like its original um, bag style, except mini. And in terms of the strap, like I mentioned, it's actually very short. Um, and I will put um, on the screen, I guess, the drop length. Um, it does have, I think, four... Yeah, it does have four adjustment holes, so you can make it, I would say, if you combine it because it's on both sides as well. Um, so it can go about two inches longer uh, if you were to use that um, longest setting, but then it can also go a couple notches on both sides shorter. For me though, I'm only about 5'3"-ish, and so I'm quite petite. I'm also just generally small and this already as a crossbody on me it hits quite high up. Like it hits nice on me if I'm not wearing anything too bulky on top like a, an extra jacket or something like that but it's definitely I think surprising to me because that is rarely the case. I always find when I get a bag that the strap is very long on me if anything so to have this feel short on me uh, was very surprising and I don't particularly love it on the longest strap just because then it pulls this outside of this tab here so it looks a little bit odd but note that you can extend it a couple inches longer if you want but aside from that it's just one of these regular sort of toggles and you can just easily clip it onto the bag and it's nice because you can also remove it if you don't want to have any strap coming off of it. So attached, it just looks like that. And then it does have these little leather tabs that you can um, kind of make sure that the strap is as close to itself as possible. Now, one thing to note as well is that if you are carrying this crossbody or on the shoulder, it is going to take more of this rectangular shape. Um, so if you like the look of it actually with the slouch, just make notes that you won't really see that when you're actually wearing it on the body. It only really happens if you're holding it by the top because the weight of the bag when you have it stuffed will then start to help it slouch. I'm not stuffing this bag when I store it because I actually really do like that kind of slouchy look and I've kind of been pushing on it just to make that a little bit more evident but just a note um, if you are looking for that particular style it, it's really not evident when you're actually wearing it crossbody. I'm happy really with both looks so I'm happy hand holding it as well as wearing it crossbody but aside from that um, everything quality wise I think looks really good. The stitches um, look really nice and uniform. I had no issues with hardware or anything like that. So really happy with that general quality. Um, I think because it was such a form-fitting box that it was shoved in, um, I do find actually that the edges up here are a little bit bent. Um, and I've tried to kind of, you know, maneuver it and like push it around to kind of straighten it out but it is really thick as well on those edges and so I found that even when I do that it kind of ends up going back like that so just a note in terms of its arrival it is a little bit like bent <laughs> honestly it doesn't really bother me no one really sees it when you're wearing it anyways um, but I thought I would make a note of that anyways um, and one other thing that I just want to point out, um, also about smell, because I've kind of looked around the internet and some people say like their leather smells amazing and all that kind of thing. And I'm not sure if it's actually based on 
the color of the bag that you receive. So I purchased the oat color, which is this lovely kind of like, um, kind of darker cream, um, a little bit even landing on more of like a tan cream sort of color. Um, but I wouldn't say it smells like chemicals, but when I smelt it, it has a very faint leather smell. And if anything, I think it smells more of like a processed leather, like they put something on it. So I just wanted to make a note of that in terms of you're wondering about um, the smell of the bag. But I wouldn't say it's offensive to me. Um, it's definitely not like a terrible chemically smell in my opinion, but um, it does have a little bit of that sort of smell. It's not like a pungent leather smell. Um, and then one other thing that I thought was kind of interesting that I did want to bring up just based off of my observations and my curiosity was the fact that this doesn't have any maiden tags and if you own something from the horse or this even the mini clementine as well, um, I'd love to know if yours has a maiden tag. I honestly don't think I have anything else other than like true handmade like local products that don't have a maiden tag um, including actually the dust bag doesn't have a maiden tag either so I thought that was kind of interesting um so I went out on their website anyways just to see because I was curious um and I thought that it was interesting that they really don't disclose where it's made easily on the website like when you actually go on the product page to look at this they do like to make note that it's like high quality leather um, and that it's sourced mainly from italy and korea so they do kind of outwardly say that but in terms of where it's made i had to kind of go into their faqs and then kind of scroll down and read into it and see where it's from but even then because i kind of have it divided in terms of manufacturing and where and who they work with. Um, they kind of proudly announce that they're, you know, they, they source ethically and all that sort of thing and who they work with. They had a division between watches and leather goods. In their watches, it clearly states that the factory is in China. But again, when you actually look at their leather products in the FAQs in terms of where it's manufactured, it again, it says like they've worked and have a great working relationship with their, you know, their supplier and all that sort of thing. But it fails to say where it is actually located. And my assumption really is that it must be made in China, just based on the fact that even their watches are made in China. So yeah, I thought I would just point that out. Um, I did think it was kind of interesting um, that they don't easily tell you where it's made. For me, I do wonder if it's more of like a perception thing because they don't want to maybe outwardly say that um, these products are made in China. To me, it doesn't phase like my opinion of it if they did state it. Honestly, if the quality was as it is, um, I liked the design, all those sorts of things. For me, I, I don't quite like that it's just not told. That is to say, I still am really happy with this bag. I've already worn it a number of times since I've purchased it. Um, one thing that I would note in terms of its wearability is that I think based on how shallow of a drop this strap is and that it's not removable, I do think it could be quite cumbersome to kind of open and close it because it does kind of get almost caught on the handle. For me, it doesn't really bother me in the long run. I'm not constantly opening my bag anyways, but just a note um, that it is quite tight. I actually really liked this bag as well in particular because it didn't have the contrast glazing. I loved that they made this one where the glazing is the same color of the bag. For me, it's just such a nice seamless look and one that I really preferred over their other bags as well. Um, and if it wasn't already stated or obvious, it does come with silver hardware, which for me, I personally love silver hardware. And especially with this kind of cream coloring, I do prefer silver hardware anyways. So now in terms of what fits in the bag, like I mentioned earlier, if you love the look of the slouch, you do need to be a little bit cognizant in terms of what you fit on this. Uh, if you wanna take like max um, advantage of all the space in the bag and you fill it up all the way, it's not going to allow for this to slouch. So if you want even a little bit of the slouch, um, normally how I pack it, and I will show you just in a moment, it kind of comes up to about there. So I basically fill it, I would say maybe like three quarters of the way. If you want like the true slouch effect, you can only probably fill it maybe two thirds of the way. So just keep that in mind. But aside from that, I'm gonna show you what I fit in it and basically it'll demonstrate kind of 
what can fit in this bag. So opening it up, it has quite a nice big opening once you actually get the flaps open. And I'm going to start off with my phone. So I have a Samsung S22 and this fits easily in there without any issues. So I'm going to show you like that. So it just lies right there. Next, I like to carry around a compact small wallet. So this one right here is the Louis Vuitton Lidlo wallet. It does fit in without any issue. So it looks like that. So super easy. Next, I don't actually have anything in here right now, but normally I would have like lip balm. I would throw in some medication, like some Advil, um, some allergy meds as well, and eye drops. So those sorts of things. So it's this small pouch and I can easily stick that there as well. Next, I'm also going to throw in my keys. So I have a car fob as well as a small key case that can easily fit in there too. So I'm gonna just stick this on the side right here. So again, that's what it looks like now. Next, I'm gonna throw in this small phone charger just at the back there. And then lastly, I'm just gonna put in this um, small hand cream as well. So I'm just gonna stick that on the back there. And then after that, and then I'm gonna close it up and there's really no issue with closing it. Um, the bag nets connect and it's secure and that's what it looks like. So it fits everything and you could fit even a couple, maybe smaller things more um, and take advantage even of this uh, little space up here that I don't have anything in. But yeah, that is what I fit in the bag. And I'd say it's small but mighty, it does fit everything that I would need on a daily basis. So I think this is a really good option if you're looking for a smaller size bag that still fits a lot of things in it. Now, in terms of mod shots, I'm going to kind of stand up a little bit, but of course, one way you can hold this is just by the top handle and it has enough give so you can easily throw it um, over your arm as well. So this is such a good option, especially because the straps are detachable so you can easily take that off if you'd like. Like I mentioned earlier, the strap, although it is adjustable, it is definitely on the shorter side. So in terms of shoulder wear, this is where it hits me. So um, decent length, this is how I like to wear it anyways. And then in terms of crossbody wear, look at that. It hits me for me personally at a really good height, um, but like I mentioned, I am around 5'3", and in general, like a smaller person. So keep that in mind in terms of how it would fit on a lot of different um, body shapes. But yeah, that is my really quick video on my thoughts of the mini Clementine from The Horse. Overall, I think for the price, I find that there's value in it. I'm personally really happy with this bag um, and I think it's a great option to explore, especially if you're interested in their bag styles. I've already worn this, like I mentioned, a few times already since I've purchased it and have been really enjoying it. I will definitely make an update on the wear and tear as I use this bag, um, so stay tuned if you're interested. But aside from that, if you do have any questions, definitely leave those in the comment section and I'll do my best to answer them. But otherwise, I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you as always for taking the time to watch my videos. I really appreciate it. But yeah, I will see you in the next video.